today we're going to learn about the parasite Trypanosoma brucei. Okay, so first of all, the Trypanosoma parasite is a eukaryotic parasite in the phylum Euglenozoa. And um, here's just a diagram on the eukaryotic cell, just to refresh your memory. Um, you can see some of the different organelles. And um, some of the uh, trypanosoma brucei, it also has a flagellum for um, locomotion. And uh, and um, unique to the cell, though, is it also um, has this thing called um, uh, VSG, um, variable surface glycoproteins. And so um, that helps it um, attack its host um, because with the different with that coating it's able to switch around its different like the antigen that it expresses on the surface so it's constantly fooling the immune system and, and evading attack. a picture of the parasites in um, some sort of bodily fluid. And as you can see, they're flagellated, which helps them move around. Um, there are just three different types, three different subspecies in the Trypanosoma brucei. There's Trypanosoma brucei brucei, and that causes trypanosomiasis in animals like um, cattle, and it's, off, it's called Nagana. And, um, it afflicts cows in Africa, but um, certain species like the Nadama cows are pretty resistant to it, um, but it doesn't harm humans because um, some aspect of our immune system is able to kill it effectively. Um, there's Trypanosoma brucei gambiens, um, and that causes slow onset chronic trypanosomiasis in humans, um, and the humans, it's, the area is usually in central or western Africa. And then there's trypanosoma, and that's, that also causes um, like the slow onset trypanosomiasis, and um, so it's not as you know harmful if you get it, but um, it's probably it's a little bit more difficult to detect um, the symptoms and get quick treatment. And then there's trypanosoma brucei um, rhodesians, um, and that causes fast onset. Trypanosomiasis, which, but this is more, of a, this is a rarer um, kind in humans because its main reservoir is in animals, kind of like the Trypanosoma brucei brucei, but it can harm humans. Um, here's just another picture of them in the blood. I thought it was pretty. And as you can see, they're really small because these are red blood cells. Um, so they're basically they're pretty microscopic. Here's a video of them moving about. They're kind of gross, but cool. Um, and that, that video is actually slowed down, so they're moving way faster in the blood and other bodily fluids. And just here's another um, video there in fibroblast. Um, and they basically um, spread throughout <coughs> all serological fluids in the body, um, which is definitely a problem. And then here's a CT fly, and um, that is the vector for trypanosoma. Um, and so basically, the CT fly just has the trypanosoma parasites living in its gut and salivary glands. Um, when it bites a human, it's able to infect that individual. However, the trypanosoma um, shared a commensalistic relationship with um, the CT fly, and so CT fly is not affected by them at all, really. There are 22 species of tsetse flies, all of which can carry trypanosomes that cause diseases in animals. Some are vectors of human trypanosomiasis, sleeping sickness. 
Adult flies measure from 6 to 14 millimeters in length and are found only in tropical Africa. Their habitats range from rainforest to dry savanna woodland. The tsetse fly can be distinguished from other flies by the pattern of the veins in the wing, forming the so-called hatchet cell. It also has a proboscis that projects forwards. A widespread and economically important species, Glossina morsitans, occurs in savanna woodlands, concentrating in areas of denser vegetation at the end of the dry season, when temperatures are high and humidity is low. Tsetse flies feed exclusively on blood. This one is on a man's hand. The various species have different feeding preferences. Glossina morsitans often feeds on warthogs. It is also attracted to antelopes, such as the bush buck, and it feeds on cattle while they are grazing in the bush. Here are two lightly colored young flies feeding. The fly's tubular mouth parts are lowered and inserted into the tissues of the host, in this case human. The mouth parts break up tiny capillary blood vessels under the skin, forming a pool from which blood is sucked up into the fly. The fly swells up as it feeds, and the amount of blood taken up greatly exceeds the weight of the fly itself. Male tsetses can easily be distinguished from females by the presence of the hypopygium, the external genitalia, at the end of the abdomen of the male. And this is a female. Female flies mate when very young. Probably most do so when taking... Okay, so um, the rest of the video is just um, basically the life cycle. And um, I'm going to show you that informative about the relationship between the tsetse fly and um, the exome of parasites and